Da Vinci, I called you Da Vinci yesterday, and some guy named Gio commented on my YouTube saying, I need to let you know this. It's not pronounced Da Vinci, it's Da Vinci. So how is the correct way to say your name? <laughs> It is Da Vinci. He was correct. Okay. Shout out to Gio. Okay. Well, listen, shout out Gio. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. So <laughs> the last time that we had you on, it's funny because I'm pretty sure the topic initially was Kevin Rose. And I feel that it's apropos to bring that up again here as we've recently seen. Well, just to go back a little bit. Well, when he was on before, we were freaking out kind of because his wallet got compromised i believe and it was like it the millions indeed. of dollars with squiggles and whatnot so man what what in the hell has happened to kevin rose since the wallet excursion oh my gosh that's a whole that's a massive story <laughs> <laughs> um you, you know what web3 moves so fast okay so what after the wallet excursion um well they created a uh, moonbirds the secondary moonbirds collection Oh, I yes, the Mystics, out. the Mystics. Yeah, yeah, Mystics. Colorful, 3D. Uh, they had a, actually a very nice animation trailer made by um, the individuals that were bought out by Doodles, I believe. Uh, Golden, I can't fully remember their name. Oh, but, yo, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, see, this guy's good. This is this is literally the NFT historian here. It, it, it's, dude, you're honestly, you're one of my favorite people to talk to, even though we've only done it twice. So I want to get into it a little <laughs> bit more often if you're if you're down here. But one of the recent threads that you uh, posted here was about the the Boomy meme coin. I'm, I'm horrible, and I didn't bring that up. I do have it saved somewhere. Um, oh, here, I think you posted it. Yeah. So what the hell is this Boomy thing? It's a new meme coin. It's been all over the feed. What's the kind of TLDR on it? Okay. Okay. This is actually quite interesting. So, and I'll start with this. That thread initially was made through Cope. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so, so Dark, Far uh, Dark Farms is one of our OG meme artists, right? In the space. It's been here for a few years. Uh, creating numerous memes that are kind of, you know, based off Pepe as the base cultural layer. Uh, but, he, you know, he's an artistic force in his own right. Um, so over the last two or three days, he announced he was launching a, a meme coin, which would basically memorialize memes, right, in an online book of memes, basically. that That's the back end, you could say, functionality, but it, it's purely a meme token, okay? So he announced that on X. I missed the initial announcement because I was I'm working on a project of my own, so I haven't been as you know on X and the and the timeline. And usually, guys, that costs you money, right? So I missed the initial announcement. Then I saw briefly there was a vote on X about um, distribution. So what it was basically is a pre-sale, okay? And he just posted the wallet because he's a highly trusted member of Web3, this is how things go, things go sometimes, right? He posted his wallet address uh, and he put out a tweet with three different options as to the distribution of the token. Okay, and the community decided it would be 50% uh, airdrop to people that, you know, people that give in their donations to said wallet and then 50% as an LP, okay? So that there's liquidity in the pool for the new token. I, I obviously missed that as well. <laughs> uh, and I woke up the next morning. It went live, I think, around 3 or 4 a.m. Uh, UTC or UK time. Okay. And us Europeans are always on the short end of the stick for, for most of these major launches because it's done, you know, from the US, etc. And it's done at times when we're asleep. So it launched around 2 million market cap. You had a, a number of people in the know. Uh, you know, that were involved in the pre-sale and it went absolutely parabolic. Okay, so when I got up, it was 6 million or 7 million market cap. One of my group chats, there was someone crowing in there about getting in early. And I was like, oh, damn it, I've missed it, etc. I saw Beanie on the timeline. Uh, you know, he, he mentioned it and said, it's out now, boom, or whatever. You know, um, it's out now and everyone should, you know, look to get in, etc. Liquidity was there. He did, he did say get in, but be careful, right? And BOEM stands for the Book of Meme, okay? So, you know, B-O-M-E. Um, so by the time I came back to the token, so I went off, did some work, I had some calls, uh, you know, some collaborations, trying to get things done and build out a team. I came back around, I think it was 4 p.m. my time, 
and the market cap was 100 million. Literally, the chart looked vertical, right? So pre-sailors were up like, you know, 50x or what have you. There were people that got in at 6 million, 10 million market cap. They were up 10x. And I was shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I buy in when I found out this morning? You know, and it's the classic FOMO, obviously. You know how it is in Web3. There's always something going on. Uh, so I posted on, on my timeline and I said, should I create a thread as, as cope, right? Just to look into this. And people were like, yeah, post one. Yeah, look into it. Create a thread, blah, blah, blah. Support the movement, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how this thread got created. So after, after writing the piece, I said, oh, I better buy some just like to show solidarity, right? So I've got some skin in the game. Uh, so I got in, but like 100 and whatever, maybe 10 million market cap, et cetera. Went to sleep, woke up this morning, and it was around 300 million. And it just kept going up, <laughs> kept going up. And I think it hit a high later today at around 800 million. And right now it might be back down around 600 million market cap. In, in my memory, it's the quickest token in terms of, you know, pump that I've, I've seen. Like within two or three days, it, it's up over half a, mil, uh, half a billion dollars. Okay, and it's been listed already on four or five different exchanges, etc. Really? Uh, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. It's all over the timeline. People posting Pepe memes. Well, I should say dank memes from Dark, far uh, dark Farms, etc. And amendments. It's, it's just it got incredible cultural movement. I am dumb because when I saw that, I was like, hmm, what the hell does Bomi mean or Bome? And I'm, I'm like scratching my head. I'm like, there's no way this makes sense. This is some kind of like weird influencer. I don't know what, but book of memes. I got to, you know, it's it's the phonetic spell <laughs> or whatever you want to say. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. But damn, that's I mean, so I guess let's follow that up with what's the, what's your thoughts on this recent meme craze? Do you think more and more is going to come? Do you think that the market's dying out at all? What's your thoughts? Well, I think we've had it going on now for around. Um, I want to say a month but it could be free two to three weeks because time moves differently in Web3. If it always feels, uh, I guess, much, it always feels much longer than it is, right? Because so many different things are going on during the day. Uh, so we had Pepe pump massively. Dog with Hat is going to be on the sphere, right? Uh, they've raised, I think it was, I can't remember what the donation amount was, but they had to raise a certain amount, right, to get on the sphere in... Um, in the US, I think it's based in Las Vegas. So you're going to see an image of dog with hat projected on that sphere for a certain period of time, which is incredible. Uh, so there's been four or five meme coins that have, I guess, pumped to Valhalla. Uh, and then we, we have this new meta, which is the pre-sale thing, right? That's been set up or started by Dark Farm. So I, to be honest with you, uh, Shilla, I predict that, I, I think within a week or two, if that, it will have it would have dipped and died out for now. This cycle of the meme would be done because what's going to happen is, and it's already started, a number of individuals are going to try and copy the success of dark farms, and people are going to get wrecked basically, right? You can get wrecked in a number of different ways. Obviously, one disreputable individuals that are coming in and and creating that meme coin just to rug you. Uh, two people that don't really understand because there's going to be much higher attention on any uh meme coin announcement right pre-sale announcement if you don't time lock it you're going to have way too many uh shall we say donations to it right so for example if people donate 20 or 50 uh you know million dollars to for a meme token then at launch it has to have a certain um you know market cap for it to be financially feasible for the people that uh donate it to to that pool and it's highly likely we'll see a few that haven't been done correctly in that respect, and people are just wrecked on launch, where there's low liquidity and it's like worth a half or a quarter of how much you paid. So I think we're going to see uh, copycats for the next, definitely for the next week or so, and maybe one or two others will do decently well. Usually imitators never do as well as the first mover, and then after that it's going to die out because a lot of people, unfortunately, are going to get wrecked. Well, somebody made a mention earlier on the timeline of yeah meme coins are the new nfts and then you know when you made that point there i'm like this kind of does sound like there's you know more derivatives nfts derivatives ah we, we've seen it all but uh sugar spicy sauce you're loving the conversation appreciate you uh tuning in and saying so t doge are you double booked phoebe says you are on root radio they might be doing like a a, a random one but yeah no i'm uh, i'm doing this for the next little bit but thanks for letting me know so uh da vinci 
Chi, uh, the threads that you have done, I want to go through the greatest thread of greatest threads and maybe touch, I don't know, maybe 60 seconds, maybe a bit longer, depending on and kind of talk about these different collections. And that seems like a very short amount of time for some of the powerhouses that were. But for Yuga Labs, we just came off of watching my original stream uh, where we minted Board Apes and the overnight of Pranksy minting you know, a thousand apes or whatever it was, a yeah. huge cello yeah. goes on to be this mass mega thing. But if you were going to depict kind of your version of Board Ape Yacht Club, how, how do you kind of view it looking back on history? From, from the beginning to now? Well, I'm, I, uh, I, I guess kind of, yeah, well, just quickly. Definitely... Yeah, just from, okay. from the nothing that it was to kind of helping yep. to push the blockchain space forward. So obviously minted uh, really early, taken, um, this was in, Q1, Q2, 2021, taking inspiration from CryptoPunks, uh, probably the, the first, you know, 10K collection with an actual roadmap, which people don't remember at the time, it was drawing doodles on a toilet seat, uh, and then meeting up in terms of like a yacht club in, in the US. And it was actually one of the reasons why it didn't mean, meant at the time, because I'm not based in the US and I don't care about these digital doodles, so I kind of, you know. So it was completely new, innovative. Oh, and gas, if, if gas prices at that time were pretty high, um, so I think the mint was 0 0.08 ETH, but you would be paying like 200 or 300 dollars in gas. Uh, I shout out to Journey, uh, Journey Crypto on YouTube. He pushed this really heavily as well, as well as a number of um, participants in Clubhouse on the TL, you know, to try and mint in it something new, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we had that. We had the mint. Then we had the consolidation phase where it was a bit quiet, uh, where the community they have a very degen feel what they did at the time, right? And they just you know kept. Uh, posted on the timeline, garnering attention, et cetera. And slowly and surely, uh, they gathered momentum, floor price increased. Um, and then we had uh, the team expanded. I can't remember who, the name of the individual, but there was someone that came in from, shall we say, Web2 with experience, linking up different celebrities and what have you. Um, and he came in and they started to get the celebrity endorsements and that really propelled it to a next level, right? So you saw the likes of Snoop Dogg coming in and saying, you know, he's going to create a number of different uh, different products with his IP. And you had Eminem come in. You had Justin Bieber buying in at all-time highs for, for a very uh, regular ape in terms of rarity. Uh, but the hype was there, and, and it was creating a, a massive cultural impact. You had Paris Hilton, um, you know, going on TV, et cetera, and speaking at, at, about the apes. Um, and... The price went vertical. Sentiment was all-time high. Secondary collection, May, uh, the Mutants uh, launched May Club, and they did great, right? They did, well, initially they dropped at free ETH, and they kind of stagnated for a bit, maybe three to four weeks. I remember near Christmas time, 2021, they pumped as well. And the, the positive for that is it was a 20K collection, 10K airdropped to holders of apes, 10K uh, released as to a secondary auction. So once they pumped, it was more free money for the apes, right? Then we had this airdrop meta where, uh, or collaboration and airdrop meta where the apes were the center basically of the NFT ecosystem. And they were getting loads of different whitelists uh, and different collaborations with the likes of Gucci and what have you um, that were really incentivizing the community. Um, and then you had one, you had uh, the major meetup as well in the US. That, that went bonkers and created loads of hype and FOMO from people that couldn't be there. So 2021, I would say up to Q2 2022, sentiment was at an all-time high, and it culminated with the mint of the other side. Okay, so, you know, early 2022, uh, they had, I think they had their major raise, right, that billion-dollar raise, et cetera, VC raise, that really solidified them in the culture. And then they announced their intention to go into gaming and create basically the next metaverse, right? Metaverse utilizing NFTs, bringing in improbable as the builders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we had what I would say was the zenith of the project, if you look back, uh, which was, sorry, you had Ape token drop, you had Ape drop, and then following Ape, you had the mint of other side uh, land, right, with Ape. Uh, and that token drop, Ape token drop dropped at, I think, $13. So each ape uh, was eligible to claim $70,000 worth of ape token, uh, meaning that holders made out like bandits. And in the run up to the mint of other side, that valuation ran up to around $27, right? So because obviously everyone wanted to mint the other side and get and get uh, 
those land claims because they knew they would be worth a lot on the secondary market. Um, so that happened, and then they had a major faux pas in terms of their smart contract. Uh, gas was way too high. People burnt two to three ETH on gas uh, around the mint, unfortunately, and that soured sentiment. But the team, the community reacted really quickly, and they announced they would uh, refund, firstly, all filled mints uh, and excess gas paid. Okay, so they did that. I think they also initially meant, uh, they also initially mentioned they wanted to move to their own chain. To, the, to an ape chain back then. But, you know, back then, everyone was looking to support uh, ETH. L2s weren't as popular, uh, and the sentiment from the community was, you know, to put it bluntly, a hell no. <laughs> so they scrapped that idea. Um, so moving on from there, that was a Zenith. I mean, other sidelines were, were selling for 90, 100 ETH, you know, at the time. It was rare artifacts. I remember there was one artifact, a potion or something that sold for like four or five hundred ETH, if memory serves. Okay, and this was a hundred K collection. Um, and unfortunately, since then, obviously, initially they were hit with the macro market. We went into a bear market in crypto in general. You know, Bay Club, uh, not Bay Club, so, um, Bitcoin tumbled to around 16 K. Uh, Ethereum tumbled to nine hundred dollars and it obviously dragged all the prices down. It dragged down the price of Ape. Um, and long story short, we come to today. Ape has this ape had to be released in its own DAO, and uh, I don't think it's been that successful to date. It's you know it, it's I guess too many fingers or too many hands in the pie, right? So it's been hard to get cohesion in terms of vision, and I think some of the AIPs that have been passed probably haven't been as beneficial to the community as community holders would want. Uh, the, the eight prices are down. Other side, obviously, it's going to take um, a long time to build, and we're in a fast-paced attention cycle, right? So the the value of those artifacts have dropped, and and the other issue, I guess, is the community initially was there as a lifestyle business, right? Oh, a lifestyle community. They joined to create their own businesses of the IP, create TV shows, create music you remember the collaboration with snoop dogg and eminem etc uh, and this pivot over to gaming was difficult and it you know it split the community because a majority of them weren't gamers right so they tried to support but they weren't actually gamers uh, and i guess all time low sentiment was kind of uh pinpointed or hit when they bought out moonbirds and gave kevin rose an advisory position probably two or three weeks ago the community did not react well to that whatsoever, although there were very tangible and strong reasons from a business perspective as to why this was done. Sorry, sorry, IRL distraction here. So first of all, that is the most amazing synopsis ever. And guys, listen, if you're tuned in right now, you enjoy this, make sure you give them a follow at DaVinci Threads. The... There was a particular point that you brought up in there that I wanted to go a little bit further, but I got distracted. Um, so apologies. If I remember it, I'll try to bring it back. But, you know, the notion of them wanting to do their own ape chain initially, uh, it's weird that it's taken this long. No. Or, I mean, uh, the entirety of the AIPs and everything to do with ApeCoin has been, <laughs> been kind of interesting, but I don't know why it's taken so long. Well, I, I think that DAOs, DAOs outside of art DAOs, uh, in Web3 have really, you know, struggled when, when we look at their performance because, you know, how best to put this? Um, you know, sometimes you could say there's, okay, there's a misalignment, shall we say, in incentives, okay? Firstly, from investors that have unlocks, right? So they're looking to profit from their investment, their initial pre-sale investment by, you know, uh, selling uh, the token on the secondary market. There's also individuals that are, uh, looking to utilize the treasury for their own personal uh, builds or what have you, but maybe that doesn't add value to the wider brand, the, the wider Yuga Labs brand, right? Um, and just the coordination, because even getting individuals interested in voting has been very difficult, right? Especially when you know there's five or six entities that have the majority of the vote. Um, you know, they, they own the majority of APE, they have the majority of the vote, and how influential is your singular vote or however much APU you own going to be, right? So the engagement's been difficult. Uh, the AIPs that have been passed haven't really been the ones that would benefit the community. And this has snowballed for a long time, you know, and, and that's created disillusionment. 
And it's it's part of the reason also, you know, coupled with the drop in eight price, it's probably down 80, 85 percent from the top. Um, that links directly to the NFTs in terms of valuation in people's minds. And it's why they've, you know, taken a, a steep decline at the moment. But that's not to say in this cycle they can't rebound, you know. I do think there will be an NFT cycle coming around. Uh, you know, it's the reason why I'm launching a project myself at this time. I think it's the best time to do so. Um, so, you know, they still have a lot of community um, social capital, I'll say, right? Social capital. They still have big movers and shakers within the community. Gaga's just come back as CEO to try and give it a new lease of life. Um, and you would struggle to say sentiments can get much worse from here, right? And usually that marks a bottom. So I wouldn't say um, Yuga's done. They've got a huge treasury as well. They own the punks and the punks have done, you know, great in terms of valuation. They're worth around, uh, I want to say $200,000 now, you know? So they've done great. They, they've rebounded two or three X off the bottom. Um, so I wouldn't count them out, but it's definitely been a tough period. So let's uh, talk about the collection that you're doing here, and then we can maybe jump back to some of the threads. I'm assuming it's Munchies Blast. It is indeed. It is indeed. I have to be careful. So uh, I'm actually launching this with uh, Sugar. I think you mentioned him. It might oh be yeah. Him. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now, now we got the connection. Yeah. No, no yeah. wonder. No wonder he's he's enthusiastic. <laughs> so we put out. <laughs> <laughs> We've put out a little teaser literally 20, 30 minutes ago. It's the first teaser for the collection. It's going to be on Blast, which is ETH L2, right? Um, anyone that's listening that's interested in NFTs and wants to be early, you know, the cliche be early, go ahead, follow the account. There will be more announcements. There's going to be a content journey, I'd like to put it, across the next, you know, month um, where you'll be introduced to what the project is doing in depth. Right, so we're going to take you through a journey with, with different. Uh, let me not put too much out there, too much out there, but we will slowly unveil. <laughs> we will slowly unveil what the project is. I don't think it's been done before in the space. I'm confident it hasn't, right? Um, and the objectives and the reasoning and the positioning will become clear. But I think Blast itself is a great uh, platform to launch on at the moment because we are in the midst of a bull market and a long term bull market. You have the ETH ETF, uh, which means, you know, a number of investors have, are keeping an eye up, thinking that demand for ETH will increase up until that date, whether it passes or not, guys. That's how speculation works in Web3. Uh, and, and we've just had the Denkin upgrade, which has massively reduced gas fees across all Ethereum L2s. And actually, when you use Blast now, you get paid. You get paid with the way it's done. You get paid in gas. So you, you send a transaction, I think you get paid 0 0.005. <laughs> ETH for that transaction. So uh, I expect to see an increase in, in TVL, uh, an increase in users, not just obviously on Blast, but across uh, the chief L2s uh, come the end of this cycle. So. so if you guys are wanting to check that out, it's at Munchies Blast. It'll be up on the screen if you're on the VOD. Just uh, pause that for a second. So just to quickly kind of scroll through here to show how many different things you've done. So we have Artifact is one of the next, and then it goes into D-Gods, and then Doodles, and Azuki, and Utes. So within there, yep. I'm curious, you know, for Azuki, it's been something that got a lot of hype, felt like it died off a little bit, has started to gain hype, Awkward issue with the whole crypto market being what it is. Or sorry, crypto market going up. So NFT is kind of going down here. I saw earlier where Supermassive was calling Izuki out saying that they've completely fudged their YouTube viewers and it's all kind of suspicious. We had the weird background with people blaming Zagabon saying you've rugged three other projects when arguably most of those projects were quote unquote art based and there wasn't really anything more to that. And it's all obviously personally subjective for it, but Azuki's had a hell of a run with a lot of fun and a lot of things that have gone well. What's your kind of general take on Azuki? And maybe if you can walk us back the history that you're aware of uh, for the collection, would love to hear it. <laughs> right, okay. So Azuki launched um early 2022, I want to say February, late February, or maybe early March time. Um, and they had the build up to their launch was incredible. They had one of the best websites we have seen in Web3, music, visuals, color matching, theme, etc. Their Discord was pumping, they had the you know, take the red bean initiative, right? So they had a dream that people could buy into. 
they were uh, uh, they were the second I would say um, anime collection, but the first one that really captured the zeitgeist, you know, across Web three. Um, and they minted out with a two ETH mint. They minted out literally within like five minutes, or what have you. So they minted out and pumped, and it's massively on secondary. And the thing with Azuki and the team, especially at that time, well, maybe even to this day, is their ability, their attention to detail when it comes to to marketing and the content they put out there. You know, and and you could see it even in the collection, in terms of the the skin tones of the PFPs, right? The matching with the background and the foreground, and they just look uh, beautiful on, you know, whether it's X or other other uh, interfaces. So they got that emotional buying uh, from their community. So we go on from there. It was all plain sailing. I think they ran to around 26, 28 ETH, what have you. And then we had the first hiccup, which was the Zagabond um, claims, obviously, or issues where um, it it was confirmed that he had run other projects with. I don't know if it was members of the team or not. Uh, and there were disgruntled community members from those prior projects saying that, you know, it, it, it had been a rug or a slow rug to intend some purposes. And that was countered by Zagabond himself saying that expectations were, as you said earlier, art only. So I think to this day, there's still a, a heated debate around whether that was the case. But he, after the first, there was a big space, I think it was with Andrew Wang, and I don't think it, that was very uh, well received but following that he made these communities whole by I think paying back into the treasury and then passing over ownership of said communities to holders um, so that bottomed I think it bottomed around it dropped massively may have dropped all the way to eight ETH if my memory is correct or something seven or eight ETH on the day but Azuki also has very low community and a lot of big bags right and also strong buying from Asia as well which is which can and is important when it comes to Web3, right? When we when we speak of support. So they rebounded quite aggressively. They rebounded back to 13 or 14 ETH within a day or two, and they slowly started to build. Um, then sentiment improved because they, they threw out a number of different innovations. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but one was around um, basically the ability to connect real-life items to NFTs, okay? So I think PBT, that's what they're called, physically backed tokens, right? So let's say you bought a hoodie or what have you. It basically connects your, your digital NFT to the item. And when you sell the item, that can be tracked on the digital side and vice versa. Long story short. So probably a, like a precursor to RWAs coming in the future and what have you. So that was taken by Storm. That took the TL by Storm and they made that open source, etc. And even before Mint, they had uh, incredible innovations around reducing gas. So the tech team was quite highly and still is quite highly revered within the space. Then we move on from there and they had the skateboard launch. I don't know if you remember this, the skateboard auctions. The, the golden ones and they went yeah, for the like ungodly ones. amounts for some physicals. Yes, yes they did. <laughs> yes, they did. So uh, they tied that all into the mythology. I mean, they had other drops before that. They had the jacket um, and they had, they had a, a necklace thing, which was a collaboration. But that was the next, I would say, huge drop. That took in it took in a lot of ETH. You had you know the big money bags flexing their muscles and wanting the golden skateboards just as pure collectibles. And you know with Web three attention is king. So when you have this sort of thing with the big money bags flexing, it always trends and it goes viral, and that pumped the price uh, of Azuki as well. Um, and then following that, they've always had great um, real life you know parties and gatherings. Okay. Uh, and they had another one, I think it was in Vegas, that had everyone who wasn't there in FOMO from the videos we could see, uh, you know, of, of them partying and bars. And Azuki is one of the rare <laughs> NFT collections that actually has a decent uh, percentage of, shall we say, ladies in there, right? So it helps in terms of the balance and when you're having fun, etc. It gives it a different vibe. Um, and this led up to Elemental. So... Uh, that real life gathering was literally a week or so. Well, in that real life gathering, at the end of it, it was an Elementals was announced. And what was dropped was the trailer, the Azuki trailer that you've spoken about in terms of YouTube views and what have you. Okay, which for anyone that watches anime, and I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big anime fan, or I'm up there. I wouldn't say I'm top tier, but you know, I am interested in anime. It was, it's a high quality trailer. Yeah, for sure. It was. Leading, yeah, shading quality frame rate utilization of characters and what have you incredible 
So sentiment was at all time high right here. Okay, people were killing their siblings <laughs> to get a Zuki to position themselves for the new drop, which was Elementals, 20k collection, 10k airdrop to Zuki holders, 10k that would be available on secondary. Okay, anticipation was at all time high. I said, oh, this is this could pump. I think the mint was two ETH. I believe I was oh, this could go up to like four or five ETH initially because of the hype, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, and everyone was expecting uh, Azuki had the full support of the community. Then the reveal day came, and to be frank, you know, it was an absolute nightmare because once they revealed, they just looked way too similar to the OG Azukis, right? So it turned out it was like a massive dilution event. People were memeing all over the timeline. We can't tell the difference between the two. Community members were angered because um, they'd, they'd uh, bought large amounts of this on secondary. And, you know, what happens was this cascade effect where the value of the elementals are dropping, but the, values of, the value of your OG collections dropping as well. And beans. And look, beans was decimated. <laughs> now, <laughs> the next day, the drive factor. That was terrible. Because before that, you had a lot of uh, content creators, right? Web free writers that would rock a bean. It was uh, sorry, bean. It was cool. Yeah, I remember that. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, it became a third collection overnight, decimated, and then some of the whales started to sell, and there were questions as to why did you release a collection like this? Is this like a cash grab, a raise? What's the reason of this? Why do we need more of the same looking character? Uh, and all that whole uh, furor. So uh, that ran for quite some time. They had a Discord conversation with the community, blah, blah, blah. So we come to today, and I would say they've slowly started to build up sentiment from there. They've announced an anthology, which will be three uh, short videos, three, sorry, short series, not series, but three short episodes, that's the right word, um, of anime, right, in different styles. Uh, and I can't remember the name of the director, but it's a director that was responsible for One Piece Red, the movie. Um, you know, he's a very well uh, respected director um, in Asia and what have you, in the U.S., He's done different uh, mangas and brought them to life. And that was a really big deal, a big announcement. Okay. So they've done that. They've announced licensing, which means I think Ichizuki, the, the side characters get $500 per episode if they're chosen to feature. And I'm, I'm not sure how much the main character gets. Okay. But that has started to change sentiment. They've also announced a collaboration where an anime token is going to be dropped uh, through a uh, I say a, a, a conglomerate, let's say, of five or six different NFT collections, with Azuki being one of them. We're not sure at the moment how closely tied they are to that token, but we do suspect there will be allocation offered to Azuki holders. So all the floor price at the moment is around, I think, three or four ETH. It's pretty low, but it's low across most NFT collections due to the meme frenzy. You know, many people have sold to get liquidity uh, to try and pump their bags in the meme space. I do think over time, getting closer to uh, the drop of these episodes, speculation, as always in Web3, and attention should pump that price. It's odd that Izuki has had the heights that it has for being able to just drop trailers and have a cool event IRL. Like, is there, have you seen anything else that's been substantial other than people appreciating the quality of what Izuki does, minus the same collection for Elementals? Okay, so I mean they've got a nice collector's profile, you know, <laughs> a nice collector's profile online where uh, they basically track the activities and activations of community holders. Sure, right. Have... That's that's new though, is it not? I thought that that was something that was recently announced. It was recently fleshed out, but they did have it for maybe three to six months. Gotcha. But it has gotcha. been recently fleshed out. Yeah. Um. So. Apart from that, I mean, yeah, it's, it is basically what you said. They are looking to utilize the IP. They've got, they had good vibes, but you are right. It is kind of from the outside looking in, but you could say this about a lot of web free collections. You're like, well, <laughs> yeah, true. what do they have? Why, why is it worth, you know, 10 or 15 K, et cetera. You know, a lot of the time it's a bit like uh, stocks, right? Where you're forecasting forward, right? So valuation is based on what you believe uh, the company be worth maybe in five years or 10 years, et cetera. And then you backdate that for the price of uh, a stock at this time. Like NVIDIA is a good example, right? So, um, yeah, I would say Azuki is similar to that, but you have got a fair point. And when pressures, financial pressures are on, 
and people are looking for ROI, etc., you know, these, especially these older NFTs seem to struggle the most. Well, I wanted to kind of end us here on that ROI note with arguably something that was the most overnight viral success that instantly died, and that being Wolf Game. Scrolling through your threads here, I was like, oh my God, I remember I bought a wolf. People were making $100,000 literally within a day. This wool token was the, the desire and the FOMO was intense. Obviously, there's a lot that's happened, but from my recollection that you'll be able to probably school me in is... The collection came out. You had the opportunity to buy uh, wolves or sheep. I don't remember exactly how the mint was, but then if you had a wolf, then you staked it. It could generate wool, but also have the chance of stealing someone else's sheep. So it was one of the first ones that there was a huge risk element to, but then the price is soared. Everything went crazy and then it came crashing down. So Da Vinci, what do you remember about Wolf Game? So yeah, so my, my recollection was I was asleep during Stealth Mint. I, I, once again, asleep. I think it minted at like 4 a.m. And those days, we used to do like 24-7 in Discords. I hate, I hate the feel of Discord these days because I was in there so, so much. In Discords, grinding, alpha groups, etc. So I woke up around 6 a.m. And they were like, Wolf Games, uh, this thing's minted, Wolf Game, and it's up. It was up like 4X already. I was like, damn it, I've missed it. Um, and I remember Beanie was pushing it heavy on the timeline. Wolf Games, the next blah, blah, blah thing. The mixture of Game Fight, Gamble Fight, and Risk <laughs> with Web3 assets. Gary V came in and aped. He aped a few Wolves. I think the Wolves had different tiers, so he, he aped the top tier of Wolves. I think he got one or two of them, and he swept, and a lot of the wills got in. And you were right. Initially, the functionality, because it was fresh, it was the first of its kind, uh, where there was a different dynamic within, I think, sheep, sheep farming wool, and the wolves can eat the sheep, right, and what have you, and there's a different balance around the ecosystem. How are you best to play this, et cetera, et cetera. And then they expanded that with land plots and what have you. So it definitely had a, a week, a month, I would say, or two of great hype. You know where they dropped the token, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I obviously was in massive cope mode. But I remember around this time, because I missed it, I made a cardinal mistake that I always told myself not to make. I aped into the next one, right? I was like, oh, okay, so there was a the derivatives. One. I forgot everybody derivatives. tried launching a derivative with the contract. Yes. <laughs> yes. So obviously we were out here cope at the time instead of just buying some bloody sheep and just like riding the winner. I was like, oh no, it's because it was up. It was up like ten x or something. I was like, I can't really. I don't know if I can get in at this time because obviously you don't know where you are when you get in that high. So I tried to jump in and got absolutely wrecked um, where I had like a 30 minute period post mint where you could sell just sold some of my assets, right? There were these foxes or whatever. Then after that, the game like crashed or something. We couldn't sell. And by the time it- There was a back, dragons one too, wasn't there? Dragons, there were foxes, there was the pirate one. If you guys pirate. didn't live this, like I, this might sound crazy, but it was, it was the market was mayhem. <laughs> Look, wolves were worth over a hundred K, hundred thousand dollars per wolf. Right? It was ridiculous. The top tier wolves. So yeah, you're right. It was hype, but it dropped with the rest of game fi and, and play, uh, play to earn, you know, they, they all kind of dropped together because it, it became known that it was unsustainable around the tokenomics. But to be fair to wolf game, um, Differing from a number of different uh, gaming projects, they have stuck around. The devs have continued to innovate uh, and continue to grow the ecosystem. When they recently were, when they recently have collaborated, or maybe they were acquired by Pixel Vault, um, and they were integrated into their gaming ecosystem, which is doing really well in terms of playability. You know, PV uh, has got some a really fun game at the moment. I was actually playing it two weekends ago. Uh, it's Battle Plan. Really fun game. Tokenomics are nicely balanced, etc. Uh, and they have an ecosystem token that's now utilized with the Wolf game as well. So, I mean, give it time. We may see a reemergence because, as you know, the majority of Web3 participants love this, you know, gamble fi, DeFi staking or game fi staking and risk sort of aspect in Web3. And if there are any games that are going to be Web3 native and make it, they usually have to be that sort of type, right? Uh, or maybe an AI agent sort of game where you don't have to be playing 24 uh, seven because within Web3, there aren't many gamers that just like sit there for 10 hours a day because they're looking to get edge and make money within the, the Web3 ecosystem.
It's absurd the craziness that was, and it seems that we're still getting odds and ends of craziness that continues to happen. But Da Vinci, I appreciate your time here. Uh, I think I'm going to try to actually make these like Friday sessions regularly. So if uh, you're free for any of the future ones, would love to have you. But final thing here, I just want to kind of let you plug one more time what, what Munchies Blast is. And guys, make sure to follow them at Da Vinci Threads. Munchies Blast, it's a new NFT project. It's on Blast. It's incredibly early. We sent the teaser out probably less than an hour ago now, et cetera. So if you're interested, we will be taking you on a journey premium and you're going to see stuff that you've never seen before in the NFT space. And I can say that with my hands on my heart. And I've been in the NFT space for three years. I've been in crypto for seven years. So follow the uh, main account, turn on notifs uh, and await updates for, you know, I guess, you know, the Dijans love the early chance to get uh, whitelist or position themselves for an opportunity to get in. Amazing. Da Vinci, thank you for your time, sir. Always a pleasure, Sheila.